welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie, and we are embarking into 2024. Uh, last year, you might remember, I did a 2023 stash down. Uh, it wasn't a complete no buy year, but it was definitely a low buy year. And the thing is, I really loved starting the year out with sort of a list of patterns paired with yarn that I just had in a drawer ready for whenever I was ready, 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 ready to start a new make. And I was expecting that I only maybe got through half of the patterns. Actually, in fact, I got, there's only two patterns that I did not make from my stash down list for last year, which I was like, whoa. Um, if you want me to do, kind of do a wrap up video on that, let me know down in the comments down below. I'd be happy to make it. But today I really wanted to focus on kind of my 2024 stash busting goals. I've got a pile of yarn here. I've got some things that just fell on the floor. So hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and find out about my plans for my 2024 stash down. So um, I'm gonna hop in and start telling you the patterns I'm planning to work on this year, the yarns I've already picked out for them. Um, if throughout the video you want to jump to something in particular, I will have timestamps down below. Also down in the description box, you will find links to all the patterns I'm gonna talk about today, as well as any worse resources as well as any resources I think might be helpful. Some of these will have clearly marked affiliate links. So if you click on one of my affiliate links to do some shopping, I earn a small commission. These commissions, as well as tips from Super Thanks and Kofi, really do help support my channel. So I can buy supplies for review, for demonstration, upgrade equipment, yada, yada, yada. It really does help me keep this channel going. So if you utilize any of my affiliate links, Thank you so much. It is so, so greatly appreciated. First thing we're gonna share with you is my first cast on for 2024. This is my work in progress, and it is the Azula Hat by Wooly Wormhead Designs. If you don't already know, I am a huge fan of Wooly Wormhead hat patterns. I did two of them last year. I have a third one on my list that I'm rolling over to 2024. I will talk about more about that in a bit. But this is the first one I cast it on, and I have to say I am so enjoying this project already. This is a hat that is actually knit side to side, so it's knit flat. Um, and it's then grafted together, and it's made up of these flame motifs that are all created with short rows. The yarn that I'm using for this um, is two discontinued yarns. <laughs> I have a lot of discontinued yarns in my stash. Um, one of them is this. Um, this is Lorna's Laces Shepherd's Wool. It's this beautiful, you can see red variegated yarn. It's really, really pretty. And I've paired that with this purple yarn because I'm sorry, I don't think you have to be in the Red Hat Society to enjoy purple and red together. But <laughs> um, I paired it with this purple yarn, which is Valley Yarns North ha Northampton Sport. Um, if you've watched my channel before, you know that one of my favorite workhorse wools is Valley Yarns Northampton. I have a whole video review about workhorse wools that I will put up here and down in the description box below if you want to watch that video. Unfortunately, they discontinued the sport weight. I'm always praying that they bring it back, but I got a lot of it in my stash, so almost any time I have a pattern that calls for sport weight, I am looking at this yarn. So um, I just thought this would be a great pairing. This pattern hits a lot of buttons for me. First of all, it is constructed of short rows. I absolutely love working short rows. And one thing about a pattern that utilizes almost all short rows is they work up very, very quickly. I mean, this 
pattern only has 53 stitches in it. The entire pattern um, is, the shaping is all done in short rows. There's no increasing or decreasing for the crown. All the shaping, everything, the motifs, everything is created with short rows. It is short row city and I love it. Not every row is a short row, but almost every row is a short row and rows that aren't a short row have a color change in the middle. So there's a little bit of like intarsia involved. I'll show you the back. There's times that I'm having to carry yarn up the fabric vertically um, while a resting yarn is not in use. Also, this pattern is knit flat and then it's grafted together. I am the weirdo in the room who really likes grafting. So yeah, hits a lot of buttons. Provisional cast on, grafting, short rows. For me, what is not to love, okay? <laughs> you may not love all those things. If you don't love all these things, this pattern may not be for you. There are other woolly worm head patterns that might be for you, but for me, this is just like a constant dopamine rush. Next pattern we're gonna talk about is my second Woolly Worm Head project for this year. And this is actually a carryover from last year. That is the Aoneum, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Aoneum, Aoneum hat. <laughs> Um, this hat is actually a cable pattern on a pearl background. Originally, I was planning to use some lamb's pride wool with it. However, last year I also got a spinning wheel and I have started learning how to hand spin. And I got some wool, some Shropshire wool, and I realized, you know what, I think this wool would make a great yarn for this hat. And so I am spinning up my own yarn for it. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you, I have, oops, yarn fell on the floor. These are two swatches that I have made testing out the yarn for this fiber. Again, it's Shropshire. And I'm very, very pleased with how this has turned out. Like this one in particular, like this swatch, it's not biasing at all. And I just think that um, this, wool is going to be really, really pretty with this pattern. This is a really fun adventure for me. I am kind of recording the process and I'm gonna share with you later on this year what it has been like to make my own yarn for a project. I'm very excited about it, so yeah. And I think this hat is really lovely. Uh, I enjoy doing cables. Is there anything in knitting I don't enjoy? That's a really good question. I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> Uh, make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with that little project. I, last year, was really into doing lace shawls. I did this one. Um, I did the Half Half Fade Shawl by Lavish Design. And I did the High Sierra Shawl by Romy Hill. That pattern I need to block, but it is almost finished. I, I actually finished binding it off at the beginning of this year, and I just now need to weave in my ends and block it, and I will be showing that off soon. My love for lace shawl knitting has not waned at all. And this year, I am going to be definitely making this pattern, the Blue Duck Shawl by Lavish Design. This shawl was designed with lace weight mohair, and it just so happens that I have a lot of lace weight mohair in my stash. Um, a couple years ago, my mother-in-law passed away unexpectedly and she was also a knitter and I have inherited uh, quite a bit of her yarn stash including this lovely yarn and when I saw the blue duck pattern and the mohair I was like I bet there's something in my mother-in-law's stash that I can use and this is what I found and I like it is so beautiful this yarn it is a purple fuzzy mohair. Uh, this is Jaeger Mohair Art Yarn. It is 50% mohair, 50% nylon. It is just so pretty. I'm sure it's going to be so sticky. <laughs> 
but I think this will be a beautiful yarn for this blue duck pattern. And anytime I get yarn out of my mother-in-law's stash, it's a really special moment for me. It's like, it's like I have her with me again because I miss her so much. So this is going to be a very special project when I cast on. During the 2022 Fast and Off Yarn Along, I won a pattern, a Tunisian crochet pattern, um, the Iris Shawl. This is a Tunisian crochet mosaic pattern. It's really going to stretch my Tunisian crochet skills, which I'm really excited about because I really enjoy working Tunisian crochet. And I had bought the yarn for it and it has just been sitting and waiting and this is the year I'm going to sit down and make this. So the yarn that I picked for it is this. This is Knit Picks Chroma. This is one of the few yarns in my stash that I'm planning to stash down this year that's not a discontinued yarn. You can still get Chroma. <laughs> the first color that we have here is this beautiful bear yarn. It's a natural kind of white creamy yarn. It's going to be the background color and then this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, self-striping variegating yarn called Carnival. And I just love this colorways. Um, I'm so excited for it because it has purples and greens and pinks and oranges and it just has, it has all the colors. Chroma is actually a sock yarn. It is 70% super washable, 30% nylon, um, but I'm going to be utilizing this in this Irish shawl pattern. I just think that the two colors are going to be like, I, d I just think this is going to be a stunner. I really do. I've got high, high hopes for this project. <laughs> Last pattern I'm going to be sharing with you today that I plan to make in 2024 is kind of my stretch, stretch goal, more even so than the Tunisian crochet project, because I have been knitting for over 20 years now, a very long time, over 25 years, yeah, for a very long time, and there is something I have never knit. I have never finished a sweater pattern. Yes, that's right. I have never been much of a garment knitter. I've always been more of small projects, hats, gloves, shawls, things of that nature have always been more my jam. But a couple years ago, I won a pattern and I saw this ethereal sweater by Knit Joy. It is a yoke sweater. It is knit top down in the round. Um, interestingly enough, I've, I've never been a huge fan of yoke sweaters. Um, but I really liked this one. I liked the color work um, that it's a it's a slip stitch pattern. So the color work is fairly straightforward. And I was like, you know what? I really like this sweater. I think there's some modifications I could make to, for it. So it'd be really useful for me, um, namely shortening the sleeves. <laughs> because I live in Southern California. I don't have a lot of uses for sweater, but I really liked this one. So I went ahead a couple years ago when I got the pattern and I bought yarn for it. I have the yarn for it. This is uh, a discontinued yarn. This is Cloudborn Fibers Highland Fingering Yarn. Um, I have all the yarn I need for this project. I just need to sit down and start making it. So this is the year. This is the year that I am finally going to knit a sweater. I'm going to climb that hill. Now, we will find out if I finish the sweater by the end of the year. <laughs> Those are my plans for my 2024 stash down goals. Those are the patterns I'm going to be working on throughout the year. As I said, just like last year, I'm sure that there will be side quests that occur. I'm sure other patterns are gonna pick my fancy. I'm gonna probably Jones to make something that's not on this list. And I will absolutely give myself the freedom to do so. Um, but it is really nice having a set 
of patterns and yarns picked out right at the beginning of the year. Um, these will all go into a special drawer so that when I'm sitting there at the end of one project getting ready to do my next one, I will sit there and go, wait a minute, what's in my drawer? And probably pick one of those out unless something else inspires me. But what's really nice, like I said, is that having this right at the beginning of the year, I'm definitely a more productive knitter. I don't have downtime in between projects trying to decide what I'm gonna make and kind of ended up, a lot of times when that's happened, I've sort of ended up in this limbo place where I'm like, I guess I'll make another dishcloth just because, and I'm not really feeling all that inspired by it. I have to say in 2023, all of my knitting felt very inspired. I was excited about everything I made last year. And I think that was because I started off the year with a list of patterns and yarns that I could work with. And I didn't have sort of this indecision time um, like I've had in the past. So I'm very excited to leap into 20, oh, and it is a leap year. <laughs> Just realized I am excited to leap into 2024 with this set of patterns. How about you? What are your making goals for 2024? I'd love to hear about them down in the description box below. Is there a knitting technique that you're excited to try out? Is there a new pattern that you are very excited to try out? Is there some special yarn where you're looking for a pattern for it? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your other knitting, Tunisian crocheting friends. Liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos, all ways that really do help support my channel and help grow this space. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. I hope that you have a wonderful 2024. And as always, happy health and happy making. Bye. We're going to stash down. That good old, I don't know why, I somehow hear stash down and I heard ho down and all of a sudden I was ready to do see do Cause you know, I am a white girl in America. I had to do square dancing classes. Did you have to do square dancing classes in like as part of gym? Let me tell you, there's a whole weird history about that. but. I don't know if this is gonna be a low buy yarn. Uh, yarn. All right, first thing I'm gonna talk about is actually my first, well, technically it's not my, it's got, I'm not counting it as my first count on. Don't overthink, don't overthink. Okay. Maybe I'll become a huge sweater pattern knitter. Maybe like I'm gonna fall in love with sweater knitting after this. You never know, it could happen. Or it could end up like so many garments uh, in a whip pile. We'll find out. <laughs> Most garments that I've started. Like, this is one of the few garments. This vest, this was from my 2023 stash down. I did a video on how I got the collar to lay flat. But this is one of the few garments that I've actually ever finished. 